right. What's up, everybody? Welcome. And also, let me make sure I get my... Uh... Oh, what's going on there? Hang on just a second. Let me refresh this page. Odd. All right, let me start it manually. See if that will do it. All right, there we go. For whatever reason, the Facebook stream wouldn't start on its own. Welcome, everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live today, this beautiful Thursday afternoon, my time. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, Adobe Photoshop CC and more importantly, how to edit a short video in Photoshop. So welcome to all the people around the world to this uh, multi-streaming broadcast. Uh, what's up, everybody? Hello. Thanks for being a fan. I saw that comment earlier. And uh, nice to see you as well, Zaza and Nigel and Richard. And I think I saw Victoria there earlier. In fact, let me click on this so I can see those comments. There we are. And Berger and Rob. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Your name means life. <laughs> All right. I'm glad your name means life. Okay. So without further ado, let me jump in and talk a little bit about or show you what we're going to be doing. Um, now, and before we jump in, let me, let me just do the one thing. And that is people are going to ask, well, doesn't Adobe make this great video editing program called Adobe Premiere Pro? And yes, we do. And do I edit my videos in Premiere Pro or Photoshop? 99% of the time I edit my videos in Premiere Pro. Then why am I showing you how to edit a video in Photoshop? If Premiere Pro can edit videos. As many of you already know how to use Photoshop or you've got a good handle on Photoshop. And if you're just doing something quick, you're not going to spend the time editing a feature film, then Photoshop may be all you need for that video. So that's why I'm going to show it to you um, in Photoshop. All right. So without uh, further ado, let's jump over to the computer. And now that I'm on my computer screen, um, I'm in Photoshop CC already. I've got it launched and I've got just an empty window. There's no, there's nothing open. It's just empty window. I've got a library panel open, which we're going to use some of those assets. Let me put the library panel away and let's talk about what you would want to do first before you even start bringing in video to edit. Number one, up in the upper right hand corner, you would normally uh, control your workspaces. And that's still the case. It's just now hidden under a little icon where it used to say the actual name of the workspace. So there is a workspace already built into Photoshop called Motion. That workspace, if you click on it, will just simply switch everything around to make it more motion friendly by giving you the timeline at the bottom. And I see I'm kind of blocking the timeline. I may have to move over when time when the time comes to move over and show the timeline. But this panel along the entire bottom of Photoshop is now there and geared for you to work with your video. So here's the thing. If you already know how to work with layers, then you already know how to edit video. It's really the same concept, just layers over time. So you know how to stack layers up, you know how to turn layers on and off, you know how to change the opacity of the layers, you know how to rearrange the layers. So that is why it's that easy, because the timeline is just a duplicate of your layers panel over time. So that's the way it works. So with that said, 
Now I'm going to go up to the file menu, choose open, and I'm going to go out to a um, time lapse. This was a 1080p video shot with an iPhone uh, or iPhone 7 Plus, and it's just cloud. So let's go ahead and open that video up. Now, I know this is, is for this, many of you, this will be new. You're used to opening the images up in Photoshop. Never a video, but when you open a video, watch what happens. It opens, the video's there, and you now see a new layer group called Video Group 1 and Layer 1, which is your Clouds movie. So as a matter of fact, I can even rename that so we'll know what it is going forward, Clouds Movie or Clouds Clip or whatever you want to call it, and there it is. And right now, this particular video uh, just happens to be about the right length. I wanted to make a 30-second video. It's a little bit longer than 30 seconds. Looks like it's closer to 33 or 34 seconds in length. But if I hit the space bar right now, this is what happens. It plays the video. So I could either hit the space bar or simply click the uh, play icon over here on the controls and that will play the video. Now you'll notice down here, or actually you won't notice down there. Let me go ahead and move this up a little bit so you can notice it. Let's see if I can adjust this up a bit so we can see the bottom. Rearrange that, okay. Let me move, let's see, if I move over this way, it's better. All right, um, still not out of the way yet. Actually, better this way. Okay, over here on the right-hand side, and maybe if I just move this up all the way temporarily, I just can't get a good spot for you to be able to see this. Let me stop the video from playing, and then adjust this up more. All right, yeah, I'll put it above my head for now. Down here at the very bottom, it says 30 frames per second, but when I hit play, um, it will go green, it might go red, it might go yellow, and what that's telling you is if you're watching this video in real time, meaning it's playing back the way it's supposed to. If it goes red, that just simply means you're playing back so much information that your computer and Photoshop can't keep up. It doesn't mean the final video will be affected, it just means you're previewing will be slower or choppier, and that's okay because you're just in the editing process. Um, also, playing at once kind of builds preview files, so the red kind of went away after I played it one time, and now it's green. So I'm just gonna pull that back down just so you know uh, where that item is. So let me go ahead and just pull this down, and uh, I'll, if I'm blocking something else, I'll pull it back up so you can see it. Okay, so we got our video in place. And I'm just going to move the control head, which is this blue button or this blue line, blue and red line. I'm going to move it all the way back to the beginning. And now um, I can do whatever else it is I want to do. So one of the things I want to do is I want to get this first before I move, before I add anything else, I want to get this down to 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, once again, let's just do it this way. Move this over so you can see it better. I'm going to um, take this little bar, move that up, okay, this little um, zoom control, this allows me to just simply zoom the size of the timeline. So that makes the timeline bigger or smaller. So I'm down here at the very bottom of the window, this little slider that goes left and right. Okay, so once I make this uh, big enough so I can see the whole video, or small enough so I can see the whole video, then I can just simply go to the edge of the video. And the minute I go to the edge of the video, look what happens. It changes into this little icon going left and right. That allows me to trim the video in real time. So I can chop off the end of that video, even though my preview is blocking where I really want to see it, but right about there. And that'll get me to the 30 second mark. Okay, so that will allow me to trim it down and it just simply non-destructively turned off that last four seconds of video. So the last four seconds of video are still there. I can still pull that back out at any time, but it's just simply hiding that right now since I wanted it to be 30 seconds. All right. So, and again, I can control the uh, size of the timeline just by simply moving this um, slider, which I can zoom in on that and show it to you as well. This slider down here at the bottom allows me to zoom or um, shrink the timeline so I can see more of it at one time. Okay, so all we've done so far 
is bring our video in. We have trimmed off the last four seconds of it because it's just clouds, it's okay. There's nothing dramatic at the end. And now what I wanna do is add something to the video. I want to add text to the video. So I've got some words and I'm gonna use some pictures that I wanna fade in and fade out. Now, in order to create those words, I've actually gotta create them. How would I create text in Photoshop? Nothing changes. You would grab your type tool and you would go wherever you want to add the type and click. And that will give you the type tool and you can now start typing. So I wanna type the word tranquility. I just wanna make sure I spell it right. Now the type is white, so it's gonna be hard to see. I'm just gonna make it bigger. And there's my tranquility word that's in white. And again, hard to see because it's on a checker background. And you're saying, wait a minute, what happened to the clouds? When you just click and add something or import something, look at what it does on the timeline. It added it to the end of it. So what would happen now is I would get 30 seconds of clouds and then five or how many ever seconds this defaults to, I think five seconds of just tranquility, which you could barely see. That's not what we had in mind. What we had in mind was the tranquility, hey, go rice girl, the tranquility would show on top of the video. That's what we really want. So instead of adding things to the end, well, how would I add this to the top if it were just an image? You would just go over to the layers panel. It is on the top, but it really needs to be on top of the group. Right now it's in the group and everything in the group is linear. So we wanna add it on top of the group. So you just simply drag it up in the layers panel and now it's on top and now we can move it over. So we just simply move it over to the beginning, scroll back, move it over to where we want that to start. And so now if we were to click and show it, there it is. There's our tranquility word right there on top of the video. Now, of course, we can still change that type move it around, put it more in the center because we don't really want that to be off to the right like it was. So more in the center like that. And right now it would just kind of pop on screen and pop off. So if I hit play, tranquility is there for five seconds and then tranquility pops off. And we kind of would maybe want to fade it in and maybe not only even fade it in, but maybe even move it over time. So let's do both of those things. Let's go ahead and uh, fade it in. So how do I add transitions? Now in Premiere Pro, there are literally dozens if not hundreds of transitions and even uh, extra plugins I can get. Photoshop editing, not as many. <laughs> as a matter of fact, there are one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> That's it, five transitions because most people aren't editing feature films and they don't need that many and this one has quite frankly, the most you'll ever really need. Um, so let's go ahead and simply drag the fade down to the beginning of the type and the fade to the end of the type. So now we've told it to fade in and out in one second. So really we'll only see it for three seconds. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back. Now, of course you don't have to preview it every single Tranquility fades on, stays there for three seconds and starts to fade out. That was it. All right, so we can try that again because now the preview has been built. So now we'll see it in real time. Fades in, shouldn't stutter now, and it just fades out. Great. Now I mentioned something about moving it, maybe having it not only fade in, but kind of move slowly across the screen. So how would we do that? Well, you'll notice that next to each layer, if you can see behind me there, next to each layer, there is this little turn down, this little twirl down to show me more. So if I said show me more of the tranquility layer, there are four options. There's transform, opacity, style, and warp, text warp. I want to transform it, but I don't want to start it there. I want to start the transformation like right at the beginning as it starts to fade. So I click the little stopwatch next to transform and that says, Whenever you click the stopwatch, that simply means do this over time. So we did our stopwatch. 
it will now do something over time. We haven't told it what to do. So what do I want it to do? I want it to, first of all, start maybe over here, not in the center. And then by the time it gets over here, I just want to simply move it to there. And notice what happened. The minute I moved it or did anything to it, it put down what's called another keyframe. So this was the first keyframe. Now that's the second keyframe that it put down automatically. So again, if I just jump back to the beginning here, oh, let me lock that in, jump back to the beginning, and I were to play that, the word tranquility comes onto the screen and then starts to slide across. Now, it stopped before it completely disappeared, and that's because this keyframe is not all the way at the end. So let's go ahead and move it to the end, and let's go ahead and move this one to the beginning. So that way, it will always be moving even before and after you see, before you see it and after you don't see it anymore. So now it's moving, and as it fades out, it's still moving. So it moved all the way to the end until you didn't see it anymore. And that's how easy it is to simply move something over time. Say you want to do it, move the playhead over to where you want it to happen, and then do it, do, you know, make whatever change you want it. So I can make it bigger or smaller over time. So um, let's go ahead and twirl this back up. Okay, we're done with the word tranquility. The next thing I want to happen over time is I want to have a photograph appear. So I've got some uh, kind of Zen photographs here. Oh, we were searching on Adobe Stock. Let me get up out of that and go to my library. So I've got this one. This is kind of a cool photo, stability. So let's go ahead and just move that over and that photo will come over. And now notice that one, since we were above the layer group, it just automatically added it as a layer above. And of course, we can put this wherever we want, make it whatever size we want, enter it, lock it in, and then we can do kind of the same thing. Right now, it would play the word tranquility, the cloud would go away, come back, and then that would just pop on screen. Same kind of thing. I would really want to fade this in and fade it out over time. So we just go to our transitions, rinse and repeat, do the same exact thing. Drag it over, drag over a fade at the end, and so now that will just simply fade on. And a few seconds later, it would fade off. Now, what if it were too long? What if I didn't really need it to stay there that long? Well, all we'd have to do is the same thing we did to the video. We would just trim it. We would just simply move this over um, and shorten it a bit so it's not on for as long as we had it originally. So now we do that, fades in, stays up for a much shorter time, fades out. And then we can add our next word. So we click our type tool, we click to add text once again, and the next word is going to be relaxation. What the world can use more of right now. Peace, tranquility, relaxation. Oops, sorry. Oh, no, what did you do? Get out of that. Okay, sorry about that. I meant to not have a second layer. There we go. And let's free transform this and make it bigger. Okay, so we're going to make that nice and big. And we'll put that, we'll start this one up here. And we'll lock it in. And same thing, we're going to go ahead. And by the way, these don't have to create separate layers. You can drag them all down to be on the one layer if you want. It's totally up to you. Um, uh, so for example, if I take this and move this down, then it becomes a layer group called video group number two. See what I mean by it's just layers over time? It made that automatically just by me putting that there. It said, well, hey, you're putting two layers together. In order to do that, I need to create a layer group. And it just did it for me. Um, well, thanks, Kenny Bond. I appreciate that comment about being a good teacher. All right, so let's go on. And now we got relaxation. Same thing. We kind of want to fade it in, fade it out. So we'll fade that one in, fade it out, and we'll twirl it down so that we can transform it over time. And we go over to the end, and we want to simply 
move it straight down. So before we did left to right, now we're going top down. And so same kind of thing, lock that in. We can twirl this back up now so it's not confusing. And we go from her back to the clouds, back to relaxation, which is starting to come down. So you got it. All right. Now, obviously, I could keep going. It's the same thing over and over and over again. So let me add one more photo. Um, I kind of like this one, too. This one's kind of cool. We'll drag this one over. And we'll put this one in and lock it in. And the next thing I might want to do this one, besides, you know what's going to happen. Fade it in and fade it out. All right, fade in, fade out. The next thing I might want to happen on this one is a transformation that is going to affect the size. So let's see if we can do that. So by the time it gets to the end, I want it to be bigger. So I'm just going to uh, Command T or Control T on Windows to bring up Free Transform. And I'm going to start transforming it, holding down my Option or Alt key and Shift key to keep it proportional. So now we've got it. Hopefully, we'll do this. Gets bigger over time. So the first one moves left to right. Second one moves top down. Third one gets bigger. Fourth one could get smaller. I think you get the idea. So let's wrap this up. Let's just do one more text, text one. And by the way, let me go ahead and save this file so we don't have any mishaps. It will save it as a regular Photoshop file, so it's got everything linked into it as far as the video is concerned. Now that we've got that saved, let's go ahead and do our text one more time. One last word. And that last word is going to be... Namaste. All right, there we go. Make that nice and big. And before you ask, yes, they can be different fonts, different colors, different everything, everything above. It can be different. All right. <clears throat> Same thing. We can uh, fade this in and out. We don't have to move it or transform it unless you want to. But I think you got the hang of that already if you've been watching. I've done it three times. And now what I want to do, let's see, we should have that. That will fade in, fade out. Now let's go back and talk about the video itself. Now the video itself is just the video right out of the camera. What if I wanted to apply an effect to that? And, and we're going to do two more things and then we're going to wrap it up. What if I wanted to apply effects? I'm in Photoshop. I can do effects to the video. And of course, no video is good without audio. So how do we get audio into Photoshop? So let's do one, let's do one at a time. Let's do the audio first. That'll be easier. You already have an audio track right here at the bottom. So that audio track, if I can get out of the way, there it is, ah, at the bottom right there. That audio track is there for you, for you to use. You can add audio to it by right clicking or just simply clicking the plus sign down here at the bottom of the track or, or to the right of the track, I should say, to add uh, a file from your hard drive. So I want to add an MP3. So I've got some MP3s. Now you might say, well, where'd you get these MP3s? Do you have the rights to them? Believe it or not, one of the biggest, best collections, I learned this from Larry Becker on one of his uh, streams many months ago, but one of the biggest, best collections of free music, royalty-free, that you can use for your projects is actually offered by YouTube. You can go to YouTube as if you were going to edit a video, and there will be a library of video or audio you can search for. And you can even pick the ones that don't require attribution, the ones that are a certain length, and you can even use them in your monetized videos. So that's where all these MP3s came from. I can use them uh, for this project that I'm going to ultimately uh, have on YouTube. So at this point, I can um, hit the space bar. Hopefully you're hearing that. Um, I'm not hearing that because I'm not wearing my headphones. Hang on, let me put my headphone on so I can hear what you're hearing. All right, I can hear it now. And that one's okay. This one's okay too. 
It's more of an action movie. All right, what about this one? Extinction level event. It's kind of dramatic. What about flying free? Flying free takes a while to get started here. Eh, not really. Galactic damages. Warrior strife. And working it. All right, not that one. Okay, so I think it's going to be... None of these are perfect for this, but I got to pick one. All right, let's pick that one, just to say we picked one. All right, so now I got it selected. I'm going to go ahead and open it. That will drop it onto the timeline at the very bottom. So, let's see, can you see that? You should be able to see that. Yeah, the green bar is the audio. Now, I happened to notice when I was uh, selecting it, it was like one minute and 10 seconds. So, the problem is the audio for this is too long. If we go back and look, look at how far out that extends. Remember, we cut the video down to 30 seconds. So this audio is more than twice as long as what we need. So if we were to um, go here and play, that's where our video would end and the audio would just keep going for another minute and people wouldn't be watching anything. So a couple things. Number one, we don't really want our video just to stop like that. So um, <clears throat> we probably want our video to fade out. And I would love to have it fade out on maybe a logo or black. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. And that's our new layer. And now that we got our new layer, let's just simply fill it with black. And now that we got that, let's put it in place. Right now it's too far out. We need to move it over and have it stop where the video stops. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit. And we can actually shorten this up a little bit as well. All right, so we got our black frame at the end of the video like that. And that one doesn't need to fade. And now on top of that video, I'd love to put a logo. So let's go to my library here, my library panel, where I've got my Adobe Live, Live library open and there's my TW logo. We'll go ahead and drop that in. Get that right in the center. Beautiful. And of course, that doesn't need to be any longer than the black frame. So we'll make that just the same amount of length. And we'll go ahead and fade that in and out as well. All right, so now we got the ending of our video. And we probably want the, actually, that's probably too, hang on, let me undo. Get rid of that. I'm just clicking on those fades that were too too long because uh, that video is not very long. So let's go back to the fade one more time and let's do, let's see if we can do 0.3 seconds. So let me do that. Much shorter fade. Much shorter fade. There we go. Okay, so now we just need the music to not play that long. So all we'd have to do is just scrub this back over so we can see it all and then shorten our audio all the way down. And I've not tried this, but let's see. Will it let me, oh, let's do a once back to one second. And let's see, will it let me fade the audio? It will not, okay, so no audio fading. I tried. There are audio fades in Premiere, that's why I asked. Um, but what I might be able to do, let's see. Let's see if it'll let me, oh, I know what I can do, hang on. I can fade in and fade out, there we go. So the audio already has its own fade in controls. All I did was right click on it to fade the, to get to this fade in and fade out for the audio. So it's got its own. Um, so now if we do this, fades out, okay, and then starts over again. Okay, so same thing. We don't want our video to just start playing. We would love to have that fade as well. So we'll do a fade on the front of the video. 
And now we've got our finished piece, except for the um, effects. Yep, audio and Photoshop. Wow, who would have thunk it? All right, and then it's set to loop, so it'll just keep playing. All right, let's um, stop that, do a quick save, and now let's um, talk about effects. All right, if we just look at the clouds, they are what they are. This was right out of the camera as is, no adjustments made to the video whatsoever. What if I wanted to make it more dramatic, make it more crazy, over, um, oversaturated video? Well, I can do all that to a photo, so why wouldn't I be able to do it to a video? If we go to the video layer, we can see on the icon here that it is a layer, or it, I'm sorry, it is a video, it's got the little video thumbnail. If you apply an effect to a video just without doing anything else, it will do it, but it will only do it to the one frame you're looking at. So if I were to go and adjust the color right now, everything up until this point would look like this. It would get to this point and the color would change and then for less than a second, it would be gone. So you wouldn't even see it. So we want to apply the effect over time. To apply an effect over time, all we have to do is go in to our filter menu while that layer is selected and convert for smart filters. Turning it into a smart object for that entire video says, oh, now whatever effect you apply is for the entire video. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm done with the headphones. We're gonna go ahead and um, go to our filter menu and come down to the camera raw filter. Why? Because it's easy to use. You can do a lot of things in camera raw, even to a video. So for example, I said I wanted to make this crazy uh, crazy dramatic. So what I would do in this case is maybe drop the exposure down. Then I would maybe go in and increase the vibrance way more than I normally would for a photograph just to make this look crazy. And then I might want to uh, uh, maybe adjust the shadows a little bit and then I can even go further with effects. And I might want to go in and apply a little dehaze to that as well. So make that crazy dramatic blue, just unrealistic sky with the yellow and everything coming from the sun. But that's the effect I want. Now when I click OK, it applies that non-destructively to the entire video. So it's a smart filter. I can always double click, go back in and make adjustments if it's too crazy, or turn it off completely. And now it's not going to play in real time because it's just really too much for it to do right now, but let's try it. It's kind of jumping along as I expected it to, but as you can see, the effect is playing across the entire video because we converted it to a smart object first. All right, so now you're done. You've edited your video. You've got your video doing exactly what you wanted to do. How do you get it out of Photoshop? All you do is go to the file menu, come down to export, and choose render to render video and that's going to um, initialize the uh, built-in um, media encoder and now i can put this wherever i want so right now it's going out to the desktop h264 the document size 1080p 30 frames per second that's all good uh, 3d quality we're not doing 3d so it's not a problem and all the frames are part of it, so forth and so on. So now I'll just go ahead and click render. And it will begin the process of making a real video out of this. So that's pretty much it. Now it's going to take the time it takes to put all this together and render it. Um, and I didn't build this ahead of time and have a rendered version to show you at the end. So uh, we can wait for a few seconds. If it's going to take longer than that, then what I'll do is I'll just post it on my social media channels so you guys can take a look at what it looked like. Now, keep in mind, the images came from Adobe Stock. We didn't license them, so they're still going to have the watermark on them. We're just using them as a preview, and that's fine for uh, a class like this or a demo. Um, but 
you would normally, of course, license them so it doesn't remove, so it removes the watermark and the file numbers, or use your own photos if you want. And um, keep in mind if you're going to post this, why use Premiere at all? Because Premiere can do uh, literally a million more things than this. <laughs> this is something quick, short, down and dirty, and uh, easy, but that's why you would use Premiere. If this is all you need, by all means, of course, use this. Uh, but if you need more, and many of you will need more, that's why. Um, audio and Photoshop, very weird flash. I know, it is, but it is there, and it does work. What is this done on? It is done in Adobe Photoshop CC running on a MacBook Pro 2014 model with um, a Core i7 quad processor. So that's why it's taken a few minutes. It's, it's baby's four, three years old now. All right. Um, you're welcome. All right. Looks great. Oliver says, can you repeat the YouTube free trick? Okay. Yeah, we can go look at that while we're waiting. Let me just... Um, Switch over to, back to me. Switch back to me while I go fetch that URL. Um, YouTube. I'll show it to you once I get it up here. And go to your channel. And go to video manager. All right, so go to YouTube, go to your channel, go to your video manager. And then once you get to your video manager, and here I can pop back over and show it to you now. There we are. Okay, so I went to YouTube, I went to my video manager, and then I clicked on, um, or I just clicked on create down here on the left-hand side. So when you click on create, that will show you the audio library. And in the audio library, and by the way, here's the direct URL to it so you don't have to bounce around like I did. So youtube.com slash audio library slash music. That's where it is. And uh, these are all the free soundtracks. There are literally hundreds of them, depending on the, um, the genre, the duration, and things you pick. So for example, for those audio tracks, what I did was I went to attribution and I said not required. That way I don't have to give credit to the band or the person that created the audio. That way you know, it just simplifies my work, okay? Then I went to duration and I said, for whatever reason, um, 30 seconds to a minute didn't work. It was bringing up some clips that were 30 seconds to a minute, but it was also bringing up clips that were only eight seconds. So let me, let's try it again. Yeah, see, that didn't work. It's bringing up clips that are 4 seconds, 10 seconds, 13 seconds, and ones that are longer. So to get rid of the sh ones that I knew were too short, I just went to the next one up. 1 minute to 1 minute 30 seconds. That's only bringing up something that's bigger th or longer than a minute, which was fine. I could trim it down. And then you can select mood if you want. So I could have done calm. Um, I think I ended up doing dramatic. And that brought me these. And then you can preview them right here in your browser. And it will even say your song is free to monetize. And if you like it, just click the download button and it's your MP3 to use uh, royalty free. So that was the how to get free music for your projects, even that you can monetize on YouTube, especially when you just need background audio or things like this. Like you're teaching a class, but you don't want to have to worry about copyright of the music or your video being blocked because you've used it copyrighted music. So that uh, eliminates that problem for me. That's where the music came from. All right, so our video is gonna take too long to export. It's gonna be probably another few minutes. I'll address a couple more questions and then what I'll do is I'll post this. Um, I'll post this oh, on Facebook and Twitter. How about that? We'll post it on those two. Or maybe we'll just wait, I don't know. All right, let's see if there are more questions. And we feel like waiting, we can wait. If not, if you want to bail, I can understand you need to bail. Um, but I hate waiting for a progress bar when I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, you had no idea Fo Photoshop CC could do this? Yep, Photoshop's been doing video editing for a while now. And uh, I used to show this on tour, and people loved it. OK, so we're not going to wait. Uh, I'm not seeing a bunch of questions come in, so therefore, we're going to go ahead and bail on it. I'll let it finish. 
and then we'll go ahead and um, I'll post it somewhere so you guys can take a look at it. All right, so with that said, thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Uh, this was fun for me to do, and I'll be on tomorrow on the Adobe Creative Cloud um, YouTube channel. And I am doing um, automating images for InDesign. And, and go, Rice Girl, you are more awesome than I. So thank you for being here and watching. All right. So thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Art Above the Couch and uh, Edward and LaVon Hall. And <laughs> LaVon, you like watching progress bars. I think you're alone in that. Uh, so thanks, everybody. And Rocky, can you uh, trim the video? Yes, we did that at the very beginning. We did trim the uh, initial track. You can also use the little scissors to make cuts. So you can cut the video if you like, just like you want to cut out a middle piece of it, you can cut it as well. All right. What time tomorrow online? Tomorrow I am online at the same time, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern and everything in between. All right. And nope, we stalled long enough that progress bar is still going, so we're not going to wait. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.